probably been the first of its kind, combining practice and theory in showing you how to adjust a chainsaw and how to understand the adjustments. To get a firm grasp of the subject matter, this video is as much about education as getting the job done. Hello and welcome and in this video I'm going to show the absolute novice how to tune a chainsaw and also what's going on inside the chainsaw carburettor as we're tuning and how it's affecting the engine and the airflow going through the carburettor. So I'll use some diagrams. So looking at the side of this chainsaw we've got the H there and the L there. So this little adjustment hole here is for the H, meaning the high, and it goes all the way through and to the carburettor. And it's the same for the L, meaning low screw, and there's a hole underneath there for that. First of all, I'll put the screwdriver into the hole labelled H. Of course, the engine's not yet running, and I'll turn this in clockwise until it stops, and I won't force it when it does stop. And then when I've done that, I'll do exactly the same for the low screw. Basically, what we're looking to do is screw both screws fully in. So we've fully screwed in the L and the H and we'll adjust the idling screw later. So basically all we've just done is reach through to the carburettor on the L and the H screws and turn them right in like this until they stopped. So this is like a cross section diagram of the carburettor if you like. If you were to cut it in half it would look something like this. This is the high screw H and the low screw L. And we've got the fuel tubes here that come out into the main jet area and out into the Venturi to the engine. We've screwed the high screw and the low screw right in till they stop. And what that's done is that's prevented the fuel from going any further than this point. So it's come down and stopped there on both of them. So it's a fuel block off at the moment. And so now we'll go back to the H again and I'll unscrew this one full turn. And it's the same idea here for the L, out one full turn. The high jet, one full turn, and the low jet, one full turn. And it's opened up that gap slightly, and now it's willing to accept fuel down both of these pipes. But remember, at this stage still, the machine hasn't started, the engine's not running. So there won't actually be any suck down so much, but there is a gap there to allow some to come down once we need it. So now we know that both adjustment screws are set identically. Okay, so this isn't a video on how to start a chainsaw. You must start the chainsaw in the usual safe manner according to the manual. We'll go from here. Holding the chainsaw at full throttle, the screwdriver is in the H hole. And when I unscrew it quarter of a turn, we can see the engine revs go down. So unscrewing it slightly more just richens it up with fuel that little bit more and allows more to come down. That, of course, allows more to be integrated in with the air. So I've got this throttle wide open. Air's rushing through. This is the main jet. And as it rushes through, it draws this fuel out of there, mixes and goes into the engine. So what I'm tending to get now, I'm starting to get is more fuel going in, quite a lot more fuel. It will be too strong a mix of fuel to air mixture and the engine will start to lag a little. And then when I screw it back in, so if we screw it in and lean it up a little bit now so there's less fuel coming through, you can see we've got a better mix there and the engine will start to pull back up again and start to sound a little better. And then close it a little more, we can see it's over revving. Screw that screw in too much. We can see there we're blocking it off and we're going lean. We've got less fuel coming down into the Venturi through the main jet. And what's happening is you've got more air coming in than fuel. The engine actually revs a little higher when you reduce the amount of fuel and increase the amount of air. It doesn't have to try too hard to combust the amount of fuel that's coming through. So it can manage with this amount quite well. And I wouldn't recommend we go too lean because with a two stroke, remember that the only lubricant for the engine is that that's coming through with the fuel. So if we lean the fuel up too much, there'd be less lubricant there. So we need to come back slightly from that over revving, just so it's a nice sort of midway point between the two, something like that. So unscrewing it slightly more, just richens it up with fuel that little bit more and allows more to come down. So let's say we've got this at an happy medium. The high revs are working well, the engine sounds good. So we've got this side now sorted. We've had a look at what happens if we go too far out and too far in. We've got it nicely working now. So let's have a look at the L screw, the low screw. I just need to screw in the idling screw enough for the chainsaw to idle at this point in order for me then to be able to adjust the L screw or the low screw, the low rev screw. Now this is where the low screw comes into its own. Firstly, as we adjusted earlier, 
the tick over. So it's slightly off the sides there so that we can get some flow going through. So we don't need to hold the throttle anymore. We're letting this screw here do it for us. So now the screwdriver is adjusting the L adjustment screw. And when I turn it inwards, we can see there that the engine revs raise. I mean, if we were to screw this in to make it a little leaner, obviously we'd get less fuel going in than air. So it would be a weaker mix and a lot leaner. So the idling revs raise slightly. So we need to do the same as last time, pull back slightly just from that over revving. And if we take a look there, we can see we go too low. Then we come back again to a nice midpoint. So if we look here, we've opened that slightly, that there's more fuel coming through because we've turned this out. So more fuel's coming down there. So we can see here then it's getting a little richer now and it'll have a different tone to the engine. And at this stage, it's important to try pulling the throttle. And if it does that, if it starts to bog down slightly, we can open that a little more. We can turn it anti-clockwise so that a little more fuel goes in and then next time it should rev up okay. And so now the idling screw here is used to fine tune this idling adjustment now. It seems a decent combination between air and fuel at the moment. I would say the engine's working quite efficiently and then from that I would bring the tick over screw out to shut this off slightly, to bring the RPM down slightly, to bring it to an RPM that we're happy with. We could adjust it from there. Well, I'm screwing it out slightly to lower the rev slightly there because I'd like them a little lower, but you'd have to try yourself and see. As you can see now, we've got the engine working absolutely brilliantly. It's revving up, it's not bogging down and it's tuned nicely. And we can see how nice this engine will now run when we try and start it again. It starts absolutely perfectly. Runs wonderfully now. I'm hoping going into it in depth this way and doing it diagrammatically will dramatically improve the way you adjust your carburetor and hopefully save you money so you can do it yourself. And by the way, this doesn't matter whether it's on a Still, a Husqvarna, a Ryobi, any kind of brand with John Sered, McCulloch, McAllister. The actual adjustments principle are the same for all on a two stroke carburetor. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video and please do take a look down in the description below where I've got some links to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. The best of it is they're printable so you can take them into the workshop with you and work at your own pace. There are some paid downloads but most of them are and will continue to be free. And I shall be continuing to add new free content here, so please do keep your eyes on this side of the site. And in the meantime, I shall be back soon. Thank you for watching.